Well, there it is, your plain old default WooCommerce checkout page. Nothing fancy here does its job and usually it includes the header and the footer. So if you're looking for a multi-step checkout option for your site, then take a look at this video because I'm going to show you how to create a checkout like this one here. As you see, we have a first step email address. Then we have a second step with a name, country, and so on. Shipping is the first one. Pay attention that the shipping and the billing have changed their location. It works out of the box with a third party shipping and payment plugins. For example, this one here. It has a gift card message options that you can fill in the checkout page. Third step is a billing one. And the fourth step is a payment method. As you see, it has a distraction-free checkout. That means it has no header and no footer. You can add your own widgets here and there, for example, in the header or in the order area. Looks nice, it's simple to use and works like a charm. So if you're interested, then jump in and I'm going to show you how to accomplish all that. And what's best, it's going to take only a couple of minutes. Now, as one of my favorite bands says, hi ho, let's go. That means we're going to go and install a plugin. We're going to go to the plugins, add new and search for fluid checkout. This one here, it's a fairly new plugin and therefore currently it has a few active installations, but nevertheless, it's a good plugin. Therefore, install and activate it. And after that, go to WooCommerce settings and fluid checkout. Let's see what happens here. So multi-step checkout and single step checkout. Let's see what does a single step do. I'm going to save it, refresh it. And there it is. It's a single step. Your contact, everything is expanded. If I open up my site in a private tab, add something to the cart and take a look. This is a single step page here. We're going to activate the multi-step. You can upload your own logo. It will be shown here in the header. Next one, you can set the header background color. For example, 2A, 2A, 2A. Let's see whether it worked. Yes, it did. Now I'm going to choose another logo here. This one. Refresh. And now I have a dark header with a light logo. I'm going to delete it, remove it and set it as it was before. Next one, you can set whether the optional fields are hidden behind the link button. And link button is this one here, change. If you're using the address line 2, then you can hide or keep it visible. Also, read the explanations. They are quite good and will let you know what's what. Next one, as you see, we have a place order button here, but you can add another button to the checkout page and it will appear here. So if you would like to have two buttons, then go ahead and activate this one here. I'm going to deactivate it. Coupon, show coupon codes as substep. That means this one here and displays a coupon code section title. Section title is this one here. So I'm going to deactivate both of them and see what happens. And as you see, I deactivated the coupon codes. If I activate it, but don't activate the section title, then it's here without the title. I like the title to be shown and therefore I'm going to activate it. Next one is the gift options. And gift options are these here. From and gift message. You can set up everything here. And if you would like to activate the widget areas to the checkout page, then activate this option here. Save changes. And now let's move to the address fields here. Billing address, same as a shipping address checked by default. That means if I open up the billing two, it's checked already. There is a billing phone address here, which is, re which is required. There is an option to activate the phone for shipping also. Either it's optional or required. I'm going to set it to optional, save changes. 
As you see, by default, there is no phone number for shipping, but since I activate it now, I'm going to refresh it. And there it is, shipping phone. I'm going to leave it hidden. Under the advanced, you can set the order summary to be sticky. That means if you scroll it, as you see, it's going to be sticky here. And next one is whether you would like to show the progress bar to be visible. As you see, it's up here. If you scroll up or down, it's going to be sticky up here. Next one, whether to use the header or footer. If you're using fluid checkout header and footer, that means your team's header and footer are disabled, as you see here. But if you activate the experimental version, that means use a team header and footer. Then as you see, they are back here. But I like it to be clean and distraction free. Therefore, I'm going to use a default one. And if you stumble on some kind of issues, then there are debug options. Just select the load on minified assets. If you don't have any issues, then don't activate this one here. Okay, now let's go to the appearance and widgets. You have four extra widget areas here. Desktop top header. As you see, I have placed one widget here, this one. I have added custom HTML. That means I embedded the map inside order summary. I can add whatever I like here. For example, this is my text. If I refresh it, as you see, it's here. Or if I drag it to checkout sidebar then and refresh it, then it's below the order summary. And last one, header for mobile. If you would like to show something specific over there in mobile, then add some widget here. Now this plugin says that it should work with every WooCommerce streams. Some teams may need adjustments if they're not using WooCommerce standard hooks or styles. So let's test whether it works. I'm using the Bloxy team right now, so clearly it works with the Bloxy team. Now let's activate the Astra team, refresh, and it's working again. Let's activate the generate press. And once again, it's working. L last one, a cadence team. And it's also working. So back to the Bloxy team and I'm good to go. Last thing for you to show. If I open up the shipping too, as you see, there are lots of fields here. I'm going to activate some of them with a custom function and see whether it works. I'm going to go to the snippets I have here. And I'm going to remove company field address one, two, city, postcode and state fields. If the plugin is any good and uses correct WooCommerce options, then it should work. If it's lousy one, then it's not going to work. So let's refresh. Shipping to. And as you see, only first last name and country is activated. All other ones I deactivated. So works really well. I'm going to deactivate this one here. Refresh. And those fields are back again. Now, if you like this video and you would like to thank me, then press thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel. And before you go, take a look at the next video you see on the screen right now, because it's also full of useful content. Meanwhile, take care.